guys, Renata Sander here from MeetAdvisors.com and I'm joined with Keith Searles, founder and president of Urban GIS. How are you today? Good, good afternoon. Good. Well, thank you so much for coming into our office. And I wanted to start off with asking you, who are you? And then what is Urban GIS? Sure. So uh, my background initially was civil engineering. I worked for a large consulting firm for a number of years. And after working there for about nine and a half years, I decided to uh, go out on my own and start my own company. So initially, I started off doing transportation design work, but early in my career, I got introduced to a technology called Geographic Information Systems, or GIS. Mm -hmm. At the time, I had no idea what GIS was, um, and it used to be very difficult to explain to people what it is, but now it becomes more and more easy because um, people need to know where when, they, when they're analyzing uh, their data. They need to analyze uh, things in context of space, location, mapping. So if you've used GPS on your phone or in your car, mm -hmm. you've used a GIS, you just didn't know it. GPS tells you where you are, but it's the GIS that really has the location intelligence to tell you where to go, how long it'll take. So really what the technology is, is it's maps integrated with relational databases. So underneath all of the technology of your GPS device, there's tables of information to tell you here are the restaurants, here are the speeds, here are the number of lanes, and through that it calculates an algorithm to tell you how long it takes. Sounds real fancy, but at the end of the day, <laughs> it's just maps and databases. Right. So we use GIS to help cities and utilities primarily to manage their infrastructure mm -hmm. because it's, it's a big part of the infrastructure is to know where it is, not to just have a database of what you have in terms of roads, um, sewers, um, maybe it's gas mains or it's traffic signals. So all those sort of things that are big data assets that's usually what we do is to help people to manage their assets with a spatial context. So are you guys the one that actually go in and, you know, let's say there's a new street light, things like that, and you actually go in manually and import it into GIS? Or, you know, how does it kind of work? Right. So it can work from a number of ways. We actually only do so much field collection. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the work we do is in the office, um, so it might be taking data from uh, someone else who has some GPS information from the field okay. or uh, other remote sensing data. It might uh, be that we are working from existing documents. So a lot of people have, <clears throat> excuse me, old atlas plans or um, engineering drawings and taking those from paper format into now more computer-based, okay. you know, digital mapping systems mm -hmm. is what we do. And then we not only create the data, but we also create applications, uh, mobile applications, web applications, things to make using that data uh, easier so that people don't have to be GIS experts. They just need to use the data and right. answer the questions that they need to answer to do their jobs. So who is your kind of target market or your ideal client? Who do you typically work with? Well, the great thing about GIS is that it really is applicable to any market. Mm -hmm. Where matters, we like to say that we matter. <laughs> day, right? um, but we typically, uh, again, apply it to more of an infrastructure uh, type of client. Uh, we do a lot of work with the city of Chicago, we've done work with uh, the county, the state, the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District, the Illinois Toll Highway Authority, uh, Milwaukee Airport, so a lot of people who are dealing okay. with managing uh, large assets. But we've also applied it on, on the small business side. We've helped some small businesses learn how to look at market saturation, develop a market area for your business, mm -hmm. be able to understand where your competitors are, um, <clears throat> where your clients, where your potential customers are spending money, how much spend is leaving your market area that you could capture if you did uh, better marketing or target marketing, all these mm -hmm. sort of applications that big data and space and location uh, have some context. Great. And so kind of moving off of Urban GIS and more on to you, mm -hmm. uh, what really drove you to become an entrepreneur? Okay, great question. It's something that um, long term I thought it might be something I'd want to do. Mm -hmm. uh, at the time I decided to do it, it really wasn't on the horizon. It was actually really a spiritual calling. Uh, I felt that God led me to do it. And uh, I was a little nervous about that, honestly. Um, but uh, it's been one of the best decisions I've ever made. Never worked harder in my life, but uh, it's, it's, it's extremely rewarding, yeah. and I love it. And I, you know, they say if you love what you do, you never work a day in your life, and I truly feel that that's Good. the case for me. And what are some of the challenges you've seen growing your business? Uh, it's been interesting. You know, you after being in the industry for nine and a half years, prior to starting my own company, you know, I learned a lot, but you learn a lot more when you're out there on your own and when the stakes really uh, basically rest and, 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 you know, rise and fall with you and mm -hmm. how well you do. And so, 
you know, uh, early on I, I spent a lot of time, you know, developing business and marketing and all those things. And then once I started getting a little success, kind of pulled off of that and then learned the hard lesson of you got to always keep planting seeds. And, you yeah. know, I started the business in 2007. So we all know what happened at the end of 2008. And so, uh, you know, kind of rolled that cycle a little bit and, and realized that you always have to really uh, get as much work out ahead of you as you can and, and constantly focus on sales and marketing mm -hmm. at all times. And how did you overcome your challenges? Or at least are overcoming your challenges? Because mm -hmm. as we know, starting your own business, it's not always sunshine and happiness. Right, right. right. <laughs> it's not for the faint of heart. Definitely, <laughs> um, you, you have to... Uh, I don't know, you have to be wired a little bit differently, I think, mm -hmm. um, and you have to almost revel in some of the challenges uh, because I, I basically feel like if it doesn't doesn't break me or kill me, then it, it's just going to have to make me stronger. Yeah. Um, and then I think you have to be a person with pretty diverse talents because you're going to have to do a lot of things yourself unless you have a lot of funding up front. You have to do so many things and, and wear so many hats, but for me to be able to overcome some of it was just sticking with it you know mm -hmm. if you have a good idea if you know that you have a sound business plan and that you feel like there's a market for your services or your products it's really sometimes just just sticking with it and then you know also getting advice right and and, and not trying to learn everything or you know reinvent the wheel yeah right uh, leveraging a lot of great resources that are out here um, and then again if you just really say to yourself um, everything comes down to sales if you don't have sales you don't have a business so if you make sure that sales is at the forefront of everything that you do uh, and that you always make sure that you invest enough time and resources uh, to produce on the sales side, then you give yourself a chance. Mm -hmm. And so kind of wrapping up, what is that one piece of advice that you would give to our community of entrepreneurs on Meet Advisors? Um, I think, uh, well, I'll, I'll do it twofold. So okay. maybe folks who are wanting to be entrepreneurs but maybe haven't quite gotten there yet, the advice I would give is make an investment every single day. Don't wait until you're you're ready to start your company to actually start working on it. Mm -hmm. What I mean by that is maybe you have a job right now. Maybe you're still trying to figure out exactly what you want to do. Basically say to yourself, I'm going to spend an hour, two hours, whatever it is. Make a deposit every single week in learning and in investigating and in building your business plan and doing all those things so when you're ready to turn that switch, you've already done a lot of the heavy lifting. So that's mm -hmm. for folks who ha haven't started yet. Yeah. For those who've uh, been around for a while, um, I think the biggest thing that uh, I learned is being diversified with your client base. Um, when we initially had success, we had three major clients. And when the economy fell, all three of them really stopped spending. And so mm -hmm. it was a very, very hard lesson. So I've worked hard on making sure I have a more diverse client base, even though we do a lot of public work. I've worked hard to make sure we have a stronger private client base. Yeah. You know, um, and making sure that it's not just the state and local market, that maybe it's the federal government market, uh, maybe it's other areas outside of Chicago, so that no matter what, you can kind of hedge your bets if things don't go as well as you want to want them to. Mm -hmm. And where can people find out more about you, more about Urban GIS? Mm -hmm. You can find out more about Urban GIS at www.urbangis.com. Uh, our website has a a lot of information. We're also on LinkedIn. Feel free to connect with me and uh, we'd love to hear from you. All right. Well, guys, check out urbangis.com and check out meetadvisors.com for more videos and blogs. Thank you. Thanks.